Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at how to use the formal method for division. Now, for those of you who have already looked at the formal method for addition, subtraction and multiplication, you'll find that the formal method when it comes to division is actually quite different. So we use a completely different layout and we start at the opposite side of the calculation. So normally with addition, subtraction and multiplication, we would always start with the smallest number first. So we start by adding, subtracting, or multiplying the units first. However, with division, we always start with the biggest possible number. So let's get started with this example here. Now the layout is a little bit different. We use this format here, which I've heard some kids refer to as a step sum. Um, the number that we are dividing, in this case 48, goes underneath. And the number that we are dividing it by, in this case 2, goes beside it. Now, before we go any further, it might be worth thinking about what division actually is. Division is when we split a number into equal groups. And that's going to become very important when it comes to this sum here. So, to tackle this sum, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to split 48 into two equal groups. Now, we're going to start with the biggest number here. So the 4, okay, that, that represents a 40. So we're starting with the tens column in this case. And we're basically asking, how many 2s are there? How many lots of 2 are there in 4? Or if we split 4 into two groups, how many would be in each group? Or if I was to split 4 into groups of 2, how many groups would I have? So what we can do is we can try this. So if I t I'm going to take four dots and I'm going to split them into groups of two. So there is a group of two and there is a group of two. How many groups of two did I have? Well, I had one, two of them. So the answer to this one, this part here, is two. Now, I'm going to do the same, but with the eight this time. So I'm asking if I split eight into groups of two, how many groups will I be left with? So let's try it. There's a group of two. There's a group of two, so that's four. There's six. There's eight. How many full groups did I create? Well, I created one, two, three, four. So that tells me that there are four twos in eight. Four lots of two in eight. The other way that people do this is often by writing out their times tables down the side. So I can actually use my two times table, jot down the stations quickly, down the side, and I can use that to arrive at my answers. So I'm looking to divide 4 by 2, so I do my two times table until I get to the number 4. So I go 2, 4. Well that was two stations I counted, 1, 2, 2 times 2 was 4, and so the answer is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Now I do the same for 8. 2, 4, 6. 8, so that was 1, 2, 3, 4 stations. So the answer there is 4. So if I took 48 and I split it up into two groups, I'd end up with 24 in each group. Now let's look at a slightly different sum. I'll just lay it out first. So we've got 89 and we're dividing it by 4. Now, this sum is going to present us with a little bit of a challenge. Because in this case, we're going to be left with a remainder. A remainder is what we're left with when we can't split a number equally into exactly the same number in each group. So let's have a wee look at this. First of all, we're doing 8 divided by 4. So 8 divided by 4 to start with. So what I could do is I could create groups of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8. I created two equal groups. So that means that there are two lots of 4 in 8. Next, I'm going to do the same, but with the number 9. So I'm going to split the number 9 into groups of 4. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. That's a full group. 5, 6, 7, 8. That's a full group. 9. That is not a full group. That is a group of 1. 
It doesn't make a full group, and so it's a remainder. So what we have is two full groups with a remainder left over of one. Now, like before, the other way we can do this is using our times table. So if we jot down our times table down the side, this time it will be the four times table. So I write down the stations, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, etc. Then I can use my times tables to actually arrive at these answers. So I'm doing how many fours are there in eight? So I do my four times table until I get to eight. So one, two, well the answer was two stations. So I've written my two there, so that's correct so far. Then I'm going to do the same, but with the nine. So I'm asking how many fours are there in nine? Well, nine is not in the four times table. It doesn't appear. It is somewhere between this station and this station. So nine is somewhere in there, but it doesn't actually appear. So what we do is we do our four times table to get as close to nine as possible. So we go four, eight. Well, that's pretty close to nine. We cannot go over it. So we have counted two full stations. We've written down our two there. But then how much extra do we need to add to eight to get to nine? And the answer is we have to add one. So that is our remainder, the remainder one there. So I've shown you two different ways of working it out. We can work it out using our times tables, do our times table stations, and then add on any extra to work out the remainder. Or you can actually visually write it down, splitting up the numbers into groups of four in this case, and then any remainders, any groups that aren't full, become your remainder there. Okay? Let's look at another example, a slightly bigger number this time. And this time we're actually going to be left with remainders in the middle of the sum itself. So last time we had a remainder at the end. This time we're going to be left with a remainder in the middle. And so we'll actually have to process that remainder in the midst of the sum itself. So let's start off here. 8 divided by 3. So I'm splitting 8 into groups of 3. So 1, 2, 3, that's a full group. 4, 5, 6, that's a full group. 7, 8, that is not a full group. So the answer is two full groups with a remainder of 2. Just to be sure, I'm going to check that with the times table method as well. 3, 6, 9, 12. So I'm trying to get as close to 8 as possible without going over it. So 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so if I go there, it's going to be too far. So 8 is somewhere in there. And I, had to, I have to add 2 on to that to get to 8. So what this tells me is it's 2 stations with a remainder of 2. Now the way we show that in the calculation itself is it is 2, but my remainder is going to go down to the next column here. So it's a remainder of 2, and that makes this number now not a 4, but a 24. So I now have 24 divided by 3. So let's try approaching this the same way. I'm going to have to split 24 up into groups of 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, right. So I ended up with eight equal groups there. And in fact, if I know my three times table, I'll see that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stations to get to 24. So the answer to this one is eight. Lastly, we have to do nine divided by three, and we can see quite simply over here that 9 is in the 3 times table and it's 3 stations in. 1, 2, 3. So the answer is 3 there. Okay, so if I split 849 into 3 equal groups, I would end up with 283 in each group. The last sum then 
For speed, this time I'm just going to use the times tables method. I'm not going to go uh, go drawing out uh, station uh, groups of four under here. So quickly I'll write out the four times table. Four, eight, 12. See how far that gets us just now. And we'll lay out our sum. 729 divided by four. Okay, so to start off with, how many fours are there in seven? So four, eight, well eight is too far. Seven would be in there somewhere. So it's one station with how much left over? Well, we have to add three to four in order to make it into seven. So it's a remainder of three. That makes this number in here now 32. Okay, let's go back to our four times table. I've not gone as far as 32, so I'll need to extend this. 28, 32. Ah, 32 is in the four times table. And it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stations into it. Okay, so now I'm just left with nine here. So how many nines are there? How many fours are there in nine? Well, we can do our four times table. Four, eight. Well, nine would be in there somewhere. So it was two stations. But there is a remainder. We have to add on one to eight in order to make it nine. So that tells me at the end of this sum, there is a remainder of one. So that is the formal way of laying out division sums.